Yeah, so I have actually a really nice and easy trick and to begin with I'm going to ask you to please pick any card you want don't show it to me you can show it to the camera okay now you want that one or you want to change your mind no okay can you please just say stop right there? okay now we lost the card it has to be somewhere in the middle okay now I don't know where is it you can see it is right there somewhere now I'm gonna try to find your card in a really unique way you won't believe it uh, I'm gonna find your card using only one finger and hopefully you remember your card right okay don't tell me yet watch what was your card there you go the four of demons and as you can see over here all these playing cards are completely different there is no other four of demons Okay, so this effect is quite easy because he uses a really old principle, which is a breather. Let me show you how it is done first, so you have an idea. You place the index and middle finger right underneath from both hands and the thumb right in the middle of those two fingers. All right. Make pressure right here and then slide it, not all the way outside, but up to here. Okay, You can leave half inch from both sides. So this technique, it is called a breather. And I'm using a picture card because it hides or conceals better any crimps or foldings, at least because it is made in the center. And because of the picture design, it is more destructive, okay, for our audience. It may not be completely invisible. And with this principle, there are many other variations you can come up with. For example, let's assume you have an ace uh, with a breath, and you can ask the spectator to cut somewhere in the middle Please, you can, can you cut it? And right here, they cut on the ace, in case you want to do it that way. If you reverse the breed, instead of doing it with a car face down, you do it with a car face up. Let me go ahead and do it. Now, when that spectator cut the deck, okay, they will cut right there on the breeder. If you have it like before, it's going to end up right underneath. So it depends where do you want it to end. In this case, I use this other method, which is pushing about half of the deck with one finger, which is exactly the same. The spectator can also cut somewhere in the middle from the short side. It doesn't have to be only from the long side, but also from the short side. And there you have the card. So explaining the performance, when I ask the spectator to take any card, let's say they take the king of diamonds, doesn't matter which one is it, I don't really care. And then I start doing the Hindu Shuffle, they say stop, they put it over here, and I'm going to drop this card right above the selection. So I try to keep this breather uh, just a tiny bit above the half of the deck. Now from my perspective I can see it, because I relax the thumb, and I can tell by waving the deck and relaxing the thumb, where is that gap, okay? But from the front, they don't see it because these fingers is still making pressure right here at this end. So you can still see the other end over here. So I can see the breather. So the breather, the gap, is going to be towards me. Then I bevel the deck, which is imperative. Second and third finger pushes against the thumb. So it bevels this way. And I put it in angle. I bevel it so the breather is invisible towards the audience. And I'm just going to try to hit somewhere in the middle. I know it is above half of the deck, so I'm going to try to hit somewhere in the middle of the deck. Okay, it doesn't have to be precise, but you see, I cut right in the Queen of Clubs. From this basic principle, you can come up with so many other variations.